What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Paraflinch. Today I've got a tier list video for you. Um, it's basically what I have gathered from my own testing and as well as the local area and what I've what I think as as of now the meta has settled to a point at which I think this is where the decks lie in winter when regards to the tier list. So I at, in front of your screen here I kind of made like a little you know I grabbed some sprites and then I just threw them on to a blank tier list and I kind of moved them around a little bit and at first you guys are probably gonna be like whoa this is kind of like out there that like Gyarados is at the bottom it just won the last major uh, regional at Harrogate uh, Robin Schultz yeah I get it um, I will go through this and I will explain my reasoning but first before we get into it please remember to like comment and sublime because that's what you are you're sublime so we're gonna get right into it I'm gonna go I think I'm gonna go from bottom to top because um, you know save the best for last whatever um, so before we begin uh, just remember that this is my own tier list. Um, we make tier lists for fun so we can have a discussion about it. So please, if you uh, disagree with me, then say in the comments where you think these decks should be and why. And uh, yeah, tell me your own tier list as well, whether these things are pretty close and you want to just switch a couple things around if you think one of these should be in front of the other, blah, blah, blah. A lot of this stuff actually uh, might not even be in order. Um, I kind of just like put them where I thought they were in the tier and I don't think that the order is really um, On point so I I'll say that when we get to the decks and I think that these should be swapped around maybe not um, They might be in perfect order, but no, I guarantee they aren't <laughs> but let's go ahead and get started Let's go at the bottom here. So um, I put Gyarados now. Why did I put Gyarados here? Like I said, it just won the biggest um, or one of the last or the last biggest regional um, that was standard uh, in Harrogate, I believe. Um, we can actually bring this up. I have Limitless open. Um, yeah, this is Harriet. Yeah, and I'm not. I'm not counting Dubai. I'm not counting that League Cup. Sorry, Dubai fans or people that played in Dubai. Uh, it was like a 22-person um, like special event, and it was just. I don't think I'm not going to qualify that as a regional, right? So, um, anyways. Sorry, uh, but Gyarados was the last one to win uh, a standard, and of course by our last re our last world champion, Robin Schultz. So, I think Robin just won with this thing because he's Robin, and uh, they even mentioned at the beginning that um, that they were just gonna play this as a meme, and it ended up winning in itself. So, it's kind of crazy how that actually happened. But yeah, every time I pull out Gyarados or I see people pull out uh, Zora Gyarados. Uh, that's the deck by the way. It's not not just Gyarados. It's Zora Gyarados and by the way, this is standard um, I believe you can tell by the title it says uh, standard tier list. So um, Yeah, so Zora Gyarados just every time that we bring it out. It just always seems to fall out flat um, You know getting Getting Magikarp in the discard pile is fine But like it's such a glass cannon uh, and Gyarados actually has always been a glass cannon, right? Um, it hits really hard, but just, you know, it just doesn't, uh, compared to all the other Zorark decks too, like, you have such better options, I think, and the consistency with getting your one prize attacker Gyarados, because that's where the appeal is, right, it's that one prize attacker, and it just never seems to just hit on point, it just seems to always flop, which, you know, it is what it is, but uh, I don't, I really don't know how Robin ended up uh, stealing a regional with it, but I'm just gonna say he won because it's Robin. <laughs> So moving on up, um, I think these guys, I think the C tier is actually pretty much where it is. Like they shouldn't be moved around. I think where the, the decks lie in order from left to right, I think that's that's how the decks are So uh, in the tier. So uh, with Glaceon, um, we've seen a few people experiment with Glaceon. Glaceon actually topped, I think, a couple places at Harrogate. Um, but uh, locally, I don't think I've seen anybody run Glaceon. And um, I haven't seen much on like Hey Fonte or Verbank about whether Glaceon uh, ha has been winning cups because you know people always post in in these forums. Oh hey, I won a league cup. Blah blah blah. Post their deck list or they post just like sometimes they don't even want to give away the deck. They just post the Pokemon and I have not seen Glaceon. Maybe I've seen it once and then in that like I said the the two spots at one in Harrogate. But um, yeah, I just have not seen much of Glaceon. And Glaceon's pretty underwhelming, right? Because a lot of this stuff, you know, is only a single attachment or it has multiple acceleration like uh, like Malamar or Vika Ray. And when you have to have two attachments, yes, you have Aqua Patch, but this is like your first turn of attacking. You want to be getting some damage going. 
and if you don't you're pretty slow the only appeal of course glaceon has that uh crystal eyes or crystal gaze i believe well i don't crystal something i think it's crystal gaze um it stops all the gx's abilities but uh, it's just still underwhelming because we have so much Pokemon in this format that have abilities that um, do not that are not GX's right and it just Glaceon's is not right for this format and it, it is pretty underwhelming so that is why Glaceon is in tier C um, probably in the future once we start seeing some tag team GX's with uh, abilities that are pretty strong Glaceon might come back uh, but right now, Glaceon is just not doing too good. Uh, there was a chance that it could have been good because Blacephalon is so, so powerful, but it just is not there. It's just not there in power. All right, so moving on up, we have uh, Buzzwool, Lycanroc, um, Tails. So this deck actually was pretty strong at the beginning of the quarter, the Lost Thunder quarter, but uh, it really started to die off. Um, I think the last time it was, it was good was... Um, right after I think Alex Shemansky took it to, what was it, a top, I think it was a top four finish at a regional, but um, yeah, it was really good. I, I took it to a first place league challenge like of like 25 people. It was really, really good. Um, you know, it's just so aggressive and powerful uh, with your Kikuis and um, you even start running in Lycia to get uh, your beast energy and Diancy turn one. And uh, yeah, the early aggression is really good. In this format, that's what it's about, is like getting the early aggression as fast as possible. And uh, it was good, but then you started to see um, it uh, die off because um, <laughs> Blacephalon, that matchup for against Blacephalon is so, so bad because um, they, can, they outspeed you in every single way. Even though you both do get your beast ring turns, uh, Blacephalon just still has more um, endurance. Uh, towards the end game and yes you do have nine tails as gx attack you know you have counter gains everything that runs uh nine tails you know they have the counter gain uh gx attack yeah sure but i think blessephalon just it still just never cares i mean everybody always says you know you have tails for that but after that after it uses its gx attack and then they go down to their uh four prize turn where they have beast rings you just get blown out of the water um the only uh deck an exception to that is the Decidueye, um, the Zoroark Decidueye Tails deck that can actually bounce around um, that that three four prize turn. So we'll talk about that when we get up higher. But um, yeah, Buzzwool Tail, Buzzwool like a rock Tails. This it's it, it was really good, but then it just started to die out, and it, just, it can't keep up with anything. I mean, maybe C is a little too. Um, a little too much to put them down there maybe at the end of b they're probably pushing like lower b tier to high c tier i think they're like right there um but you don't see any more of these buzz rock tails players anymore they're really good at the beginning of lost thunder like i said but just now they they just can't keep up so moving on up to b tier we have septile he is also like very low b high c um but i put him in the b tier because he has answers to a lot of things um with you know, baby Sceptile being able to, um, you know, stop basically uh, Blacephalon if they're not running a Reshiram or um, I saw actually a really cool tech was uh, since people are playing the Alola Muck in um, Blacephalon or the, the Ditto Prism and the Alola Muck, they're also running um, a Salazzle GX, which actually is a really cool idea um, to get around that. Uh, also, it's also a really good game finisher and it's also a really good um septile counter so uh yeah so but anyways if they don't have that stuff septile just destroys the deck right um early on was stuff unless they were playing plumeria but nobody's playing Pl plumeria anymore maybe maybe a couple people but nobody's playing plumeria just because they want to get that consistency and when you want to fit a little muck in there to combat gramble and other stuff um you just don't have the room so anyways going back to septile uh, Sceptile is pretty consistent. It's with its Grovile, it can really get out everything. You just need to get one Grovile and you got boom, boom, boom. Uh, make sure you get your Elm, get your Trico out. And uh, you've got your engine going pretty much. Uh, it reminds me a lot of actually Lost March because once you get out the stage one, then you are just good. You're just good for the rest of the game, honestly. Um, all your stage ones. Um, so it, it kind of feels like a stage one deck because you have that um, con extra consistency, just like Lost March. But um, you also have, once you get your Sceptile out, you've got such a humongous um, thing of HP. And your first attack's really good for Grass to 60 and then discard a special energy. So really good. Lots of decks, of course, 
Zorox in the format always will be uh, DCE is just, just getting rid of your DC without eight ways to get it back except for a Ranguru and other things you know like Gardevoir's GX attack but uh, uh, yeah I mean Sceptile is super super good um, really bulky uh, deck and can put up a lot of things uh, the problem is that um, it, I just I feel like it just does not uh, put up with everything else that you see here um, the one prize attackers are a huge problem for it uh, Buzz Shrine um, as well as like Lost March uh, sh the the Shuckle Hoopa wall stuff is a problem it can't keep up with Vika Ray um, I mean I probably should have put Naga uh, Quag below Sceptile because I think that's an easy win for Sceptile um, but I think Naga Quag has a better matchup against everything else, so um, I think I just think Sceptile just can't spe uh, keep up with these other decks. Um, yes, it is uh, one attachment and then two attachments for its um, bigger attacks. I think it's like 130, just a flat 130, and the other GX attack. Um, I think it's like heal. It's it's a heal move as well. So. I, I don't know. Um, it's good against spread uh, for sure, um, but yeah, against everything else, it's just it can't keep up. Moving on to Naga Quag, uh, this is one of those decks. I I'm gonna call it a rogue deck because it really is. Um, it's a really cool one prize attacker, and it takes all this stuff that you see on the board. It has a pretty good matchup against it. The only problem is that its consistency is is kind of low. Honestly, I think that's all Naga Quag has a problem with is, is its consistency. I mean, once it does get set up, it kind of just sustains itself because whenever the water energy uh, gets discarded, you right, and uh, Naga just brings it back and then Quagsire just washes out. But what a lot, a lot of uh, smart players do is they'll just take out the Quagsire and then you have all you have is your um, Naga Natals and then once they run out of, you know, energy switches, if they even play them, uh, they're kind of just stuck. Uh, takes three attachments to do a turning point. So um yeah i mean i think the deck is cool it's it can be a really cool medical as well um going into a format that just has blacephalon and uh buzzwell garb shrine i think it's probably the best call um but uh like my area my area actually has a lot of um blacephalon and buzz garb shrine so uh but against a lot of other stuff it's kind of just it's a little underwhelming that's why naga quag is at the bottom here of b tier it's still a pretty good deck. We'll just leave it at that. Anyways, moving on to White Kyurem. I think White Kyurem and Naga Quag are probably about at the same. I don't think either of these decks are better than one another. I think they're actually at the same spot if I had to put them on a tier list, which they're right next to each other. But what I mean is like they should be like right on top of each other. Um, so yeah, I don't think um, one is better than the other. I think Kyurem is just a different flavor than Naga Quag. Uh, you do have to keep Wishful Batons on your board. That's the one thing. But nobody's really running Field Blower. So it's not much of an issue. I think uh, White Kyurem has more raw power behind it. For sure, it can reach uh, higher damage outputs um, more consistently than Naga Quag. Because uh, the highest damage you can hit with Naga Quag is Naga on its uh, turn when you have three prizes left and then quag when uh you can load up a ton of water energy on it for hydro pump which you don't really want to be attacking with um quagsire in the in, for the most part um you want to keep him safe on the bench so i think white care might be just a little bit better in that regard but i think they're like the same flavor so there you go uh, moving on to the next deck we got shuckle shuckle hoopa all this mill stuff um the walls I've lumped it all together in B tier and it's in the middle of B tier because I think that a lot of people are running a little muck now. Um, we'll talk more about Lola muck. I know a lot of you are like, oh, but we can counter capture it, install it in the active, blah, blah, blah. Yes, you can. But there is a lot of people that are running, you know, switching cards or running. People always run Guzma. They'll, they'll manage their Guzma as well. Uh, smart players will do that. And yeah, I think I think Shuck, Shuckle and Hoopa and all these wall variants are just a little underwhelming um, right now. I've seen actually Shuckle make it to a finals in a cup recently, but I think just uh, you have to get lucky to win or get high with uh, Shuckle in a cup right now just because of so many techs against this stuff uh, that they're kind of just stuck in the crossfire because people are running muck for that Granville matchup. So yeah. Um, Again, like I said, shuckle players, smart shuckle players could probably uh, keep toe to toe with you. Um, but I think just you, you're going to start running out of your resources at eventually. And um, you can just, you know, Guzma up or your opponent will Guzma, Guzma you. Um, 
every time you, you strand a muck in the active counter catcher or guzma or whatever so yeah that's that's why i have shuckle here and uh yeah one thing i do want to mention before we move on to uh ray here is that uh, i've been saying the beginning of this format a lot i mean the beginning of this quarter so if i if i said the beginning of this format i really mean this this quarter so uh lost thunder because i'm going to start talking about tier these tier lists in specific quarters so the beginning of this quarter so Vika ray was um even turbo ray was looking to be pretty good at uh, the beginning of this quarter because of this lightning support that we had um, with uh, what you call what you call it um, Zara Aura. Uh, people were like hyping uh, Rayquaza up a lot, but uh, it actually took a big knockdown because of Gardevoir's uh, popularity towards the beginning as well and uh, Swampert. So uh, it never really recovered after that, and it's always just been sitting there. It's pretty good, um, you know. It's just a big raw power deck, but with Blacephalon also coming out. Uh, in the same set it kind of just put him on the back burner and he doesn't really have any other appeal uh, because Blacephalon is just so uh, so much better at doing the big wombo combo knockout so it's not even a, I can't even call it a combo because it's really just one thing it's very linear um, it's not even a combo it's just sit there attach fire energy blah 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 you guys know you guys know exactly so um definitely ray took a huge hit and it's just sitting there and it, it can't keep up with other um stage one or not stage one uh non-gx attackers like buzz shrine lost march um Co uh coco Passimian can just like destroy it um so yeah so that's why ray's there moving on so we have uh lost march so lost march is actually i wanted to put it at the top of b tier um however Passimian coco just kind of destroys it um but Lost March is really, really good right now. Uh, if you look at, I can't remember who um, popularized the list. Um, Azul was actually playing Lost March recently uh, of this guy's list, and it's it's really good. It doesn't play Elms, um, just, just Lily Engine, and super. It's super consistent. I was playing a few games with it, and it's just really, really good. Um, I was considering taking it to a, uh, an upcoming cup, um, but I, I kind of I kind of want something a little more consistent i'm trying to go for my second or my so i already have a second and a third for my best finishes this quarter but i'm trying to get another second or first to do some max some math fixing for the points so i i want to go with something a little more consistent something that will last me throughout the whole game i've been usually maining um blacephalon but i think lost march might be a little too frail uh for my personal um what I what I want to go into a tournament with I want something a little more backbone more options um, so I think Lost March is still really really good uh, it can it's a one prize attacking deck and it can just it can keep up with everything that you see here on on the screen so uh, Lost March just kind of suffers a little bit in the consistency route but like I said that deck that Azul was playing uh, on his channel go check it out uh, it's really consistent um, and I think Lost March is pretty good so I want to put it higher but a lot of these decks that you see have answers to Lost March so um, especially Ultra Necrozma sitting there you'd be like well not, not, not Ultra Necrozma but you gotta remember it's GX attack is pretty devastating uh, especially when they play Giratinas they can set up the numbers for the 70 damage knockout so it's it's a uh, it's really good it's just the, the better players know how to counter Lost March as well uh, with these decks that are above here so moving on uh, we have Passimian Coco in the same regards as um, Lost March you have a, a single prize attacking deck that's pretty much good against everything um, except for it struggles again with that consistency and you'll notice that uh, the only one single prize attacking deck that's an S tier um, the reason why that one's an S tier is because its consistency is actually pretty good and we'll talk about that when we get there and it's probably because it's got a mag cargo in it but uh, we'll just move on from there um, Pesame and Coco I don't really need much to explain about it. it's just spread 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 okay let's hit some big damage Pesame okay uh, let's go ahead and move this damage and win that's kind of just the, the name of the game with Pesame and Coco and uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's been pretty good since the beginning of this quarter, and it's still kind of good now. It's a that this deck out of all these decks, I think, is a huge like meta call. Like, if you expect a ton of Zorark, uh, then you just bring Passimian Coco and you just win. So, uh, definitely a good deck, uh, but not not high tier. Um, I think it's like it's on the border of high tier for sure, though. So, definitely definitely the meta call deck. So, 
Moving on to Ultra Necrozma, the first in A tier. So in Ultra Necrozma, I actually took Ultra Necrozma to a third place uh, finish at a cup. Um, it was a smaller cup. It was like a 20 man or 20, 21 man cup. Um, but uh, they, but it, it ran pretty well. Um, it's just not as good as like gas can though, because uh, you have to run. The problem with this is the consistency with the metal energy, of course. So getting that metal energy is tough. Um, you can run the Oricorio that gets you that metal energy, but that's a one-time thing. And yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think um, Ultra Necrozma, it has a lot of uh, answers to... Actually, you can run pretty much answer to all of these decks uh, that you see on the screen. But uh, again, the problem with that is the consistency of just you're playing a bunch of one of Pokemon for the most part. You're probably playing two Ultra Necrozma and then one of Dawn Wings. Uh, one of Giratina, one of Chimeco. Um, you're just playing lots of one ups and the, when you're playing against a deck that you need that Chimeco or you need that uh, Don Winks Necrozma because you're playing against Buzz and it's prize, it kind of sucks. So, um, yeah, I I think uh, I think it's an, it's a high tier deck for sure. It just is lacking a little bit in consistency. And yes, you guys might be saying, Eric, then if you're expecting lots of Buzzwool, then just up the con or up to your consistency by adding uh, more of those Pokemon, but you got to understand the list. Uh, if you've played Ultra Necrozma, the list is super, super tight, and um, being able to, you know, add more Pokemon while also, you know, sacrificing, you know, some trainer cards that you, you need in that deck for sure. Um, like, you need to keep your Acro Bikes, uh, you need to keep all your mysterious ball, <laughs> your mysterious ball search uh, kind of stuff, so um, it's really tight. Uh, you also need to run the stadiums and uh, your energy count needs to stay pretty much the same. You can't mess with that at all. So yeah, um, Ultra Necrozma, I think I've said enough about it. It's pretty good. Just there's a tiny bit of consistency issue with, you know, uh, playing one of Pokemon. But other than that, I think it's really strong. Uh, it hasn't answered almost everything. Just make sure you don't prize the stuff that when you play against the stuff you have the answer for. Yeah, you just you get my point. So anyways, Moving on, moving on up, we've got uh, Gardevoir, Solgaleo, Swampert. Um, I think this was the deck that uh, Jimmy Pendarvis, I believe, won with uh, a couple regionals ago. Um, or was it Internet? I'm not entirely sure. Um, but regardless, it did win. It started, uh, it started the chain of uh, Gardevoir doing super well. It might have actually been... Um, now that I think about it, it might have been, uh, Robin Schultz. Robin Schultz, I think, popularized it in, like, a regional before, and then Jimmy won with it. Uh, I believe. People were like, wow, this deck is actually really, really good. I'm, I, I never really liked it, though, because it ran the one of, uh, like, uh, Cosmog, and then one of, of the, uh, the weakness negating Solgaleo. And I thought it was just a little, it was a little out there, but, you know, uh, Robin Schultz knows what he's doing. And it did really well, obviously. It placed well when he played it, and then when Jimmy played and won with it, uh, it was obvious that the power of the deck was really high. So, But right now, it actually isn't doing as well as just, um, as you can see, a couple decks forward here. We have Gardevoir, uh, just the, the Gardevoir um, Swampert. They don't run the Solgaleo. Um, they also run... Oh, uh, shoot. What's the other thing that they run? Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. All right, we're back. So yeah, uh, I guess I was just like, you're done, you finished, thank you. I guess I was just going a little crazy there. Uh, Soleo Gardevoir is the same deck that's being ran uh, currently. Um, I don't know why I thought that. I think I might've seen a different build and was like, oh yeah, it seems better. But no, I think it's the same exact concept, same idea. So I just took out the Gardevoir that was ahead because these other decks ahead of it, I think, do a better time against it. Uh, so, yeah, it's just, I don't think it can keep up with the, the rest of the decks that are in the format that are above it. So, we'll just move on from Gardevoir Sogleo. It does have, um, uh, it doesn't have a ceiling to its damage output with Gardevoir, so that's really cool. Um, that's one of these decks. Uh, I think it's... Yeah, I think a lot of these decks actually um, going forward here have uh, an infinite uh, damage cap. So, uh, well, two two other ones really, but uh, that's why Gard Gardevoir has always been good because it's just got that raw power of um, being able to hit as much damage as possible. So, well, as much energy as you run and your opponent. So, there we go. Uh, going to the next deck that we thought was a meme deck, 
Granbull. Granbull has actually, since the beginning of the, the quarter, Granbull has been really, really good. Um, who was it? Uh, who who won with Gramble? Some somebody won with Gramble, and it just was like super. It was super popularized, and everyone and their mother started playing Gramble because number one, it was cheap, and number two, um, it's a lot of it's a lot of thinking. It's a cool deck to play because it's it takes a lot of thinking, like playing in the head what you got to do, what you got to smooth over to the top of your deck to make sure that you can hit that 160. Um, yeah, Gramble's just always has been um, a really good deck, really fun to play. Um, who was it that, uh, who's the guy? Tord Recklive is the guy's name I was trying to think of. Wow, Eric, you forgot Tord? Yes, I did. He actually made a deck with Gramble, played it, and everybody was like, whoa, that's broken. So, you know, Gramble has, is still popular right now, and it's looking to be really good even after uh, Lost Thunder, um, or even after, even after, even after Team Up comes out. So, uh, yeah, look look out for Gramble. Gramble's gonna be there. It's in the middle of A tier, I think, uh, just because a lot of people are playing Alola Muck, uh, that the deck is kind of just, eh, you get mucked and you're you're out of the game. But uh, a lot of the time, you can actually get out of it. So, but uh, yeah, so Gran Gramble, I think, is still a really high tier deck. Uh, there's just that Muck counter can be pretty pretty bad. So. Moving on up, we've got Steelix, and I think Steelix just barely, I think this is the the deck that you're all like, whoa, Steelix, no, I'm not talking about the wall Steelix, yet Steelix still in itself is a wall, uh, but I'm talking about the attacking Steelix deck. Now, this deck is actually pretty insane. <laughs> if you if you watch uh, some people play it, I, you can see just the raw power behind it. It reminds me a lot of uh, Mega Groudon, you know, uh, just attaching and getting ready, but um, it, the Malamar variant's pretty good. Uh, just th this guy is so 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 strong, and is, has so much HP as a single prize attacker, and uh, it's just it's really good. Go watch some videos of it. I can't really explain it. Um, you're, you're gonna have to watch. I think Azul did it. Did a video on it. Um, I think uh, Omnipoke did a video on it. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, somebody else did um, a video on attacking Steelix. It might have been Andrew Mahone as well. Uh, but go go take a look at those. Um, it's just the raw power behind being a stage or a yeah stage one uh, non GX attacker that can swing for a lot of damage is pretty dang cool. So uh, go take a look. Um, might be a opportunity to get some points with Steelix as well. It was actually a consideration for a League Cup I've got coming up uh, this weekend. So. Um, definitely check it out. Definitely check out Steelix. Uh, don't be caught off guard by it for sure. So, and it also has a really good Blessed Cephalon matchup. I'm, I want to mention that uh, because you have a uh, metal frying pan that negates the fire weakness. Uh, Blessed Cephalon actually will like 90% of the time run out of energy, knocking out your Steelixes and you just win from there. So um, pretty dang cool. They don't run field blow or anything like that. So yeah, Steelix is just super, super good. So moving on up to the top of A tier, we have all of the Zorark stuff. Um, I think like Zorark Lycanroc is probably the best out of um, the Zorark decks, but uh, Zorark Decidueye Ninetales um, are also there trailing behind. I think uh, these these decks have a lot of problems with the decks that are above it in the top S tier, um, but it's a Zorark deck. Uh, it's got that built-in consistency. And you guys know, Zorak is just always good. It always has been, and it just it just will power through things even when it's behind. So, yep, Zorark definitely is still top tier. There's no doubt about that. Um, where where these Zorak decks are, I think they're all pretty close. Um, Zorak just generally is, uh, but yeah, I think Lycanroc just with its aggressiveness is still uh, just slightly above the Decidueye Ninetales. Um, Decidueye Ninetales uh, variant was high, higher at one point, but I think now people started to go back to Lycanroc because they realize that that aggression is just so good. And it's not it's not just Zorak Lycanroc. Uh, Ninetales is included in all three of these, right? So you you can have the Ninetales included in the Zorak Lycanroc as well. You can always have um, Weavile in these. Well, I think just the Lycanroc one makes sense because you can run the unit energy for the fighting in dark. So, but anyways, yeah, I think um, I think Zorark is still high tier. It will be for sure uh, coming into 
Well, actually, I'm not too sure about uh, Zork in Team Up. I think it actually might take a little bit of a decline, uh, but we'll, we'll see. All right, moving on up to the S tier, we have Malamar. I think Malamar is actually one of the most under um, rated Pokemon in this, or this <laughs> underrated Pokemon. Y yeah, I know. You know what I mean? She's like, no, I have no idea what you mean. Uh, Malamar is the most underrated uh, deck in this format. I think a lot of people are just brushing it off, you know, just saying, eh, it's not that good. But because, you know, Zorark's a problem for it. But really, it's really, really good. Uh, if you think Zorark's a problem, of course, you can just take in that Marshadow. Now, this is, I should uh, clarify that this Malamar variant is like the gas can list that run lots of psychic uh, Pokemon, uh, more more buffed up versions so than the Ultra Necrozma version. So you usually run like two ofs of these Pokemon. So two of, of um, uh, Dawn Wings, two of a Necrozma. You know, two of Chimeco, um, maybe two of Giratina, and then you run your 4-4 Malamart line, and then you got four of all your trainers, similar to like how Gascan does it, but um, but more up to the potential that it needs to be for these other decks that are in this format. So yeah, Malamars is still really good, just like Gardevoir has that infinite damage cap with Ultra Necrozma, um, not Ultra Necrozma, sorry, Me Necrozma is uh, the, the Pokemon here that can, uh, you know, discard as much Psychic as you can from it, or actually all of it, and um, yeah, you can hit high damage, uh, high damage ceiling with Necrozma, so I think Malamar's in a really good place this format, um, definitely uh, don't brush it off, make sure that you're prepared for it, uh, a lot of people in my area do not play Malamar, I think it's... Um, it's an unforeseen deck that people are just like, whoa, you're playing Malamar? What? That's a, that's a deck? That's that's kind of strange. But anyways, yeah, uh, definitely, definitely, definitely Malamar is top tier. Uh, just play some decks with it. You'll just you'll just be able to see that the raw power behind Malamar in this format is just crazy. So moving up to the next spot in S tier, we have Buzzgarb Shrine. Now Buzzgarb um, has always just been good uh, since the beginning of actually the season. Uh, it was the top of the format uh, and it still is top tier even in Lost Thunder, um, you know, it's, it's even with like Giratina in the format now, it's still just so good, uh, being able to put early aggression on and make, making your opponent like dig with items, making your opponent, uh, just, just do so many different things that just set you up for, for damage and you're always going to get your, uh, your, uh, sledgehammer turn unless you're playing against Deciduire or something that can snipe damage, if they can set up the damage, uh, most of the time they can't though, so you're going to get that big sledgehammer turn. And um, Garb and Weavile kind of just sweep up like they always have been. So really good uh, because we have so much GX in the format. Uh, we always will. Um, so until GXs die off, blah, blah, blah. That'll probably be in like a couple of years until they make a new mechanic. We whatever. Um, so yeah, Buzzgarb Shrine still really good. <laughs> it still really will be good um, uh, in the coming uh, team up format. Uh, it, it'll be up there with Zapdos, I think. I think Zapdos will be better, but um, yeah, Buzzgarb Shrine, really, really good. Shrine decks, just so, so good. Single prize attackers. And then in the S tier, we have Blacephalon, my favorite deck from the set. So uh, just because you have the flexibility between, uh, if you run into the single prize attackers, you just attack with Naganadles, and then uh, everything else you can just blow up with uh, Blacephalon and just mind blown everything. So super good. Uh, even when you go first and you start Blacephalon, you just burst and get a free prize. <laughs> like, it's it's such a great deck, uh, infinite damage cap, just like Gardevoir and Malamar, and it's it's so it's so overpowered. I think it's just it's great against everything. Um, you know, against these wall variants like Shuckle, you have options with teching in Alolan Muck, which I personally recommend. You always should be teching in the Alolan Muck. And then as well as uh, energy switches, you also have Naganatal GX. Um, you just see in these tournaments, people are just placing well with Bless Ephelon, and it's just because of that raw power. It's the new Rayquaza like we talked about. Uh, it's just so, so powerful in itself. It doesn't need Mux, Mux, it doesn't need Mux, it doesn't need Mux, it needs Muck. Uh, it's definitely a really strong deck that um, it's good on its own. It doesn't need anything. It's raw power just wins you games. Uh, it's very linear. People know what you're going to do. They know your game plan, but what can they do about it? That Those are the decks that I think, yeah, they're, they're, they're predictable, but they're so good that even though everybody knows exactly what you're going to do, it still wins because it's just so strong. So 
definitely, I think, um, Bless Ephelon is uh, top tier. I think it is the, the best deck in the format right now. Um, if you disagree with me, please let me know in the comments, uh, especially in your area. I think this is pretty consistent for our area over on the West Coast um, in the Portland area. So I think um, I think this tier list is pretty good. I even think it might even be pretty well um, across uh, the U.S. So um, let me know uh, what your area looks like, if it's similar, if it's not, uh, what decks you think should go um, above and below. Uh, please be civil about it in the comment section and um, Yeah, until next time guys. I will see you guys later uh, Let me know if you like this kind of this kind of video this type of thing and uh, we'll keep these videos rolling So until next time keep it safe keep it cool, and we will see you guys later uh, Don't be a fool. That is the that is the punchline. We're going with we're going with the punchline We'll see you guys later Take care <laughs>